Welcome to this section on more on identities. And since there are no new concepts in this section, uh, we'll just do a few examples. And pretty much it's about taking um, trick functions and substituting for them with um, basic trick functions, as in this case, they're asked us write secant theta times tangent theta in terms of sine and cosine, which are the two basic trick functions. And as I'm talking here, I'm actually waiting for the equation editor to open in Word. So let's give the program a few more seconds. There we go, hopefully. Okay. So we know that secant, of course, is 1 divided by cosine theta. There we go. And we know that tangent is sine divided by cosine. And then we're basically done, I guess, and we can still simplify that and write this as sine divided by cosine squared. There we go. Done. Next example says to add 1 over sine plus and 1 over cosine. That means we need a common denominator that's obviously going to be sine times cosine. So I'm going to grab this one here and then cosine. There we go. And that means in the process, of course, we're going to get cosine plus sine in the numerator. So very straightforward. And it's actually, yeah, I just said add the two fractions. In the next example, it says prove the identity cosine theta times, um, hold on, I'm just going to double check here. Prove the identity cosine theta times ta tangent theta equals sine theta. Okay, what are we going to do of this? Um, let me write, write it here so I can manipulate it. Well, the way we do this is that we look at what we have on each side and we have to come up with the same thing on both sides. Um, on the right hand side, it's as easy as it can get, sine theta. You know, we can substitute something else in here, but it's just going to make it more complicated. So what we do instead is the left-hand side that looks somewhat, a little bit complicated, that's what we're going to um, focus on simplifying. The cosine itself, you know, can't really write anything more simple than that, but the tangent, we can definitely write something better. So here we're just going to write sine over cosine. So we're going to do this here times sine over cosine. And then we can see that obviously the cosine and the cosine are canceling on the left hand side and we're getting sine equal sine. In fact, technically, I really don't have to show this last one because we can see that that indeed is the case. Okay, and the uh, last example that I want to do here, well, this looks a little bit more complicated, right? So, we're supposed to show that the left hand side looks the same as the right hand side. I'm going to just copy and paste it again and start manipulating one of the sides here on the right hand side, yeah, 
you know, there's sine times cosine of 2 in front. I cannot, I cannot really do a whole lot there. But here on the right hand side, what I can, I'm sorry, on the left hand side, what I can do is it's sine plus cosine squared. So I use FOIL, and what I come up with then is going to be sine squared plus 2 cosine cosine plus cosine squared as you follow that. And I expect of um, students that they would know how to FOIL. So that's what I'm going to do here. So a moment ago I said, well, it's going to come out to sine squared plus 2 sine cosine because it's a perfect square trinomial plus cosine squared. All right. Sorry, that's a little bit off the screen here. Let's see how bad. Yep, there we go. That looks nicer. Um, does, is the left hand side the same as the right hand side? Well, at this point here on the left hand side, what we're going to do is we use one trig identity, which is a Pythagorean. Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So, 1 plus this one here. And now, of course, the left hand side is identical to the right hand side, which is what we're supposed to show. Except that, oh, interesting. Yep, there we go. Done. And that really was it on this section where we're just supposed to practice with these expressions and um, become familiar with, with the identities even more. See you in the problem section.